Uh, you've been part of some pretty successful running games going back to your career, at Denver, um, and, and also here in 2016, uh, the Jay Ajayi years, uh, year. Uh, what, 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 is, what does it take to have one of those forceful rushing attacks? Well, it takes a whole group. I mean, it's not just uh, there's one person that gets credit for it a lot of times with the yardage, but it, it's everybody. It's the offensive line. It's the tight ends. It's the wide receivers blocking force. It's the quarterbacks making great decisions a lot of times to get us in and out of the right looks and the right plays. Uh, so it, it takes everybody on the field for you know, a successful running game. Do you feel like you have the talent and the personnel to get get something where sustainable where you can average over 100 yards per game? Well, uh, you know, I think the stats are always a nice thing to have. But at the end of the day, we're trying to win. And, and if that means that we have to run it, you know, and have one of those kind of running days, then we want to do that. But if if we need to pr pass protect to win the game and that sacrifices some of the run you know, possibilities, then that's what's most important to us. What do we have to do to win the game? Uh, we'd love to certainly have a run game, you know, uh, that we set a precedent that we're going to run the ball and that we can run it effectively. But, but at the end of the day, we want to do whatever we have to do to win the game. All right, let's go to Daniel. Hey, how you doing? I'm, I wanted to ask about Jalen Waddle and kind of the overall um, thoughts of the passing game. You know, he had 12 catches, but just for 58 yards. Uh, I mean, do you think that, you know, what would you attribute to maybe not seeing as much success down for him? Do you think maybe things would be more diversity in the route running and just as a whole, what do you see from the Denver passing game and why you haven't been able to connect on some of those uh, deep plays? Well, I think we have to, you know, we're talking a lot about that, trying to find explosive plays and ways to get explosive plays, not just to Jalen, but to other people on the team also, you know, whether we're talking about Will Fuller or, or Mike, um, you know, we took some, we did take some shots uh, at the end of that game the other day in, Oakland, in uh, Las Vegas, excuse me, but, um, but we're always trying to find explosive plays and, and we're, we're constantly talking about it. We're trying to put them in, we're trying to get them, but, uh, you know, we're limited at times because of what the defense gives us. So we have to call them at the right time and we have to be prepared and we have to dial those up when, when we think we have the best chance to, to execute those. Yeah, and a quick follow-up because you didn't mention that. I know after the game, Jacoby said that, you know, the Raiders will just rather play a lot of cover three, so you're going to get a lot more um, guys in coverage. I mean, were you pleased generally with the way Jacoby kind of handled the looks that he was getting? And um, would you kind of like describe it as like a kind of that, that give and take and just kind of taking what the defense gives you but also trying to force their hand? Well, I think that's a, that's a concept that we go to and every week we're trying to we game plan and try to come up with things that we think are going to give us the best chance to be successful. So, you know, we're watching the defense and we're trying to make sure that, OK, what we plan for is what we're getting. And so now we can use our things, but we always have to be ready to adjust to that they can do something different. And so there is a give and take at all times in every game in different situations and what's going on is what they feel like our strengths are that they're going to try to take away and what we feel like we want to do to attack their defense. So we're, there's always a give and take in everything that you do. And we have to just make sure we're communicating and that we have things going on in there that give us the chance um, to adjust and then to execute when we do call our plays. David. Hi, right, Coach. Good morning. Uh, the play call in the end zone that resulted in a safety, could you educate us on how something like that is uh, decided upon? And uh, Jacoby Shoulder, the, bl the blame post game, uh, should he have gone elsewhere with the same play call and route patterns? Well, I, you know, I think I think what happens is when, when you're in the heat of a game, uh, you're calling plays and that that position, you know, especially Jacoby, he made a decision and, you know, I, I read what he said about it. Uh, and I think, you know, that, that's what happens. He made a decision and it, it, right, wrong. If we all went back, would we do different things? Probably we would do something different or we could do something different, um, but we didn't. That's what we did in that play. And so, you know, we have to learn and grow from that experience of what happened on that particular play. But uh, that's what happened on that play. And that's, that's, what, is, that's what happened. Joe? Hey, Eric, um, just to, to follow up to make sure we're clear, um, Jacoby, did Jacoby make that play call or did that come from the coaching staff? No, we called that play into him. Yeah, that wasn't an audible or anything of that nature, no. OK. 
Okay. And, and just to close the loop on that one particular play, was Waddle, in fact, an eligible target on that play, or was he supposed to just be an, 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 a decoy that does not get the ball? No, that, that was an empty formation, and we had five eligible receivers in that particular formation. One more um, general um, question. Um, there's been a lot of talk about taking what the defense gives. What is your opinion on taking what the defense gives versus trying to take more? Can you ask that one more time? What is your opinion on taking what the defense gives versus trying to take what you want? Well, there's a... I there's, a, there's a, a whole process in there. We, when we game plan and we put things together that we want to call in the game, we're calling those things based on what we studied, looked at as what we anticipate the defense giving us a certain look for. What we're calling is what we think would be best against those looks. Now, we have to have adjustments. We have to have rules and be able, because if they don't give us um, the specific look that we want, then we have to have rules and adjustments and be able to, to execute them a play that we call, we can't just call time on all the time because they don't line up exactly how we want. So we're planning our plays to what we think we can do best against the defense. So I think to answer the question, what I'm saying is that we want to dictate what we think is best for us against what the defense has shown us to do. Travis. Hey, coach. Good morning. I actually was going to ask the same question Joe did, but that was that was really good. Um, I was I was just curious. You know, it seems like you guys have a lot of success when you're up against the clock and they're a little more urgent on offense. I was just curious, what do you see differently that makes you successful in those situations on offense when you kind of have to go a little bit up tempo and, and you know fight against the clock as well? Well, that that may be you know kind of what's happening in the game, but we want to have urgency at all times. I mean, we 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 want to be productive, not just at the beginning or at the end of a game. And, and we want to be productive the entire game. So we want to have tempo. We want to have urgency the entire game. We're working for that. We've got to get better at it. Obviously, um, that's something for us to work on going forward. We're talking about that. But we, we want to have urgency the entire game for 60 minutes. We don't, we don't want to let down and then, you know, kind of ramp it up at the end. We don't want to do that. We want to be consistent throughout. And, uh, again, that's something that we can work on and get better on. Anyone have any other questions for Coach? Joe? Hey, Eric. I just wanted to ask about um, Austin Jackson. He had a few moments where he showed some good aggressiveness in the run game, but there was still some tough moments in pass pro. Um, what, what is the coaching staff stressing to Austin right now? To keep working. And to, you know, to buy, to continue to buy into what we're doing and our coaching and what we're talking about. Uh, he, you know, he's a, he's a competitive young man. He, it's important to him. Uh, and, you know, we feel like he played better, but he's, we're still continually working and he's going to continue to work and we're going to continue to work with him um, to get better and improve so that we do get uh, the, the level of play that not only he expects from himself, that, but that we want from him also. David? Uh, yeah, and also um, with regards to passing him, opening it up and, and trying to take shots downfield, how much was Will Fuller's first game a kind of a feel-it-out game for him early, and uh, how much can you add on his plate as he becomes more comfortable in the offense? Well, first of all, I think it was good to have him, him out there and see him make some plays. We threw the ball to him, you know, try to take some shots to him. Um, he made a great catch on a two-point play, you know, route that he had there. It's just good to have him out there and get him into the offense. And the more he's in the offense, the more things we'll try to do as he gets more and more comfortable with it. And uh, I, I think, you know, we're just going to keep working on that. But as long as as long as long he's able to be out there, we're glad to have him out there and we're going to find things to try to do with him. Omar? Obviously, we have a history with, with Miles and Ahmed. We know what they bring to the table, but Ma Malcolm Brown has been a guy who's contributing probably a little bit more than most of us expected. He started last week. Uh, what, what went into that decision, not just to start him, but to give him sort of a, a, a equal share of this backfield? Well, I think, you know, Malcolm has done a great job since he's been here. He's a, he's a very focused, serious 
uh, mature type person, intensely competitive. And uh, what we've seen is that his preparation and how he does everything that we needed to find a, what we wanted to create a little bit more of a role for him rather than a couple of plays here and there. So we wanted to uh, change that up and see what it looked like. And we you know, feel like they had some production for us. So um, we'll continually evaluate that each week. Like we do is what we think gives us the best chance and to run the ball as well as with protection and things. So he, he did a nice job this past week. He played more than he has. And, uh, but I thought he did a really nice job.